Um, so, hi, we're from IDEO, and um, we're going to start out really broad by talking about emerging technology um, in the design process. Uh, and we are Jenna and Zoe. Hello. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm Jenna, and I'm managing director of IDEO's emerging tech uh, lab and practice. Um, and I actually started out uh, in computational geometry. Uh, my first job was at KPF, uh, panelizing skyscrapers, uh, writing genetic algorithms to make sure that we were complying with insulation requirements uh, for residential buildings in China, and all sorts of other exciting things. Um, today my remit is much broader, and so we're going to be talking today about um, the design process in general. I'm Zoe. I'm a software designer at IDEO. Uh, I have a background of computational archit architecture and uh, computer science. So I'm currently doing more AI and emerging technology at IDEO. We have a beacon. Uh, it's called Emerging Tech Lab. So we do all kind of experiment and how we bring our experiment day to day to our client project. Uh, I also have some background in the electric engineer. I was working at MIT um, HCI research lab before. All right, so what is IDEO? Um, IDEO is a global design and innovation firm, um, and it's been around for quite a while, almost 45 years. Um, and over that history, we have made impacts in industries ranging um, from medicine to uh, commercial products uh, to the big tech firms, um, actually also up to things as abstract as government policy. Um, but through all of that, um, our sort of reason for doing our work is to create a positive impact through design. Um, and what do we think are the, uh, w what's the way that, that design happens? Um, we think that you need to uh, balance several concerns. Uh, you need to be uh, viable. You need to actually be creating and able to capture value in some meaningful way. Um, you need to be desirable. And this is, I think, what IDEO is most known for, trying to understand what people want, why they want it, how we can fulfill the underlying need that causes them uh, to want what they do. Um, what is uh, responsible? So what are the potential consequences of the design choices that we're making? And then what's feasible? What's possible? Um, and we believe that good design lives at the intersection of all of these concerns. And uh, the uh, emerging technology practice in particular is very interested in what's feasible. And what's feasible, as we all know, is changing pretty rapidly. Um, and we like to see this not as a constraint, but as a place from which design grows. And we have been exploring, again, over the whole of our history, um, what that intersection between technology and people really means for the world. Um, and we are trying to uh, build not just products or services, but also the relationship between people and the tools that we use every day. And so today, we're going to talk a little bit about the design process. This is one way to diagram out a typical design process. But there are many others. Um, so we're going to talk today about what happens when you're trying to build empathy um, to uh, synthesize and understand uh, what you've learned from that empathy. Um, to build ideas off of that understanding, uh, and then to express that understanding through prototyping, and finally to refine it into um, a functional um, and uh, mature product. And we'll start by talking about empathy. Um, so not all of IDEA's work um, is uh, wonderfully visual. Um, in fact, this work is a, a collaboration with um, the XRA.org, bringing together a bunch of uh, experts from industry and also experts um, from the visually impaired community uh, to define an, an object model in um, XR that um, is accessible to visually impaired people. Um, and so we had to do this really interesting thing of understanding sort of what tools and processes um, spoke to and were accessible to um, both industry and community members. And actually there was, there was quite a bit of overlap because things like structure um, and, and um, easy navigation are important both, both to engineers and to people um, who need to use things like screen readers to understand uh, the information in front of them. 
It was also really important for us in this work to help uh, the XRA itself learn more about uh, the technical development process. So we got to um, lean a little bit on some of our backgrounds as engineers um, to talk through what the life cycle of uh, different forms of development were so that they could better facilitate um, when to intervene um, in the process to make the most impact uh, for, for the communities that they were trying to uplift and serve. So things like this um, make us wonder, uh, what bridges do we need to build to enable conversation across divides of both understanding and imagination? Yeah, the next part, I'm gonna go through the synthesized part. So now we have the problem, now we have the, our empathy towards one problem, and how we, emer how we merge that emergent technology into the process is what we wanna share here. Uh, so this is a project we've done with a healthcare venture studio, and we try to design a digital dashboard on how to solve the problem of the healthcare issues in the rural American. Uh, so there's, our problem find, uh, defined that almost 76% of the land have a shortage of primary care physicians. So people in the rural area mostly didn't have the good access to the physicians and the, the right healthcare. Uh, so I'm going to show you the final result of what we designed, and I want to interpret how we use the emerging technology in the process and how we evaluate that. At that. So our final result we designed uh, is a provider-facing AI software that generates a personalized report for the people living in the rural area. How we adapt to their language, cultural, and context difference, and how we use this digital platform to help them to get access to the care more efficiently. So we designed a bunch of features like patient personalized interface and medical report generation with all these AI features. But how we get there and how we use the AI or other emerging technology in the process to help us to proceed to the result. Uh, to go through this process, we actually did a bunch of market research and user test and user um, interview. Uh, to get there, we actually start with a very broad topic, the access to the rural health. And we kind of have more like multiple inspiration, including the rural community mindset and how we get inspiration from multiple uh, experts like the physicians and also the expert who uh, deeply into get accessibility for the healthcare for people living in the rural area. And then we've done a bunch of research, but at the end we narrowed down to the health literacy with uh, the support of AI. Um, this is our process. We interviewed 10 stakeholders and 73 um, rural residents. We asked them the questions and then we used AI tour to synthesize that. The entire process just cost four weeks, um, but how we evaluate that. So we use the framework of evaluating working with AI. So there are four <coughs> criteria we use to define if this good tool to use in our design process. The novelty, the transform transformative, ins inspirational, and unreliable, which this four framework help us to define if this tool is right to use in our design process. To give you an overview of what we did, uh, so we make a metric of metrics of the tools we're using, like if we want to focus on the domain knowledge and research, if the AI tools is really good to get that. Um, for example, the novelty, we use the chat GPT and the probability in the process. I've choose the result they give us, the collection of the information context collected by AI is quite accurate at this moment, uh, but we still need subject matter expert in the, um, in the field to answer, ask the right question. Because when you just ask a broad question, the ChatGPT cannot give you the right answers to go through the process. Um, for example, the synthesis and the in insight, we all know that AI can persist large a large volume amount of data. So AI is really good at synthesizing the data we had in the entire process of interview. Um, give a detailed information, we did a bunch of um, different uh, we did an entire documentation of how we collaborate with AI and emerging technology in the research and the synthesis process. Uh, so there are some example like context awareness. We use probability to help us synthesize our user res result. So when you get your user interview, when you get your market research, how can you embed AI in the process? And how can you accelerate the process? It's here we want to share. So there's a question for you. By integrating AI into the design research, how might we balance human insight with AI data synthesis to ensure empathetic outcomes? So this is about synthesis. When we have all the information necessary, when we have the right uh, question to ask, what we can do to ideate more ideas? Um, so IDEO is a very interesting place. We do a lot of experiments day to day. We use AI, we use XR, we also use engineering to help us imagine the future, to imagine the future in a fun way. 
um, this is a project we imagine the future of pants. What if we could embed AI and emotion into the accessory you're wearing, the outfit you're having every day? Um, this is a side project we did that called If This Pants Could Talk. So we were thinking about how we can apply a fun idea into multiple domain and leverage AI as a power to help people customize their life and help us help people to more consciously live in their life. Um, so we built a pen spot that you can actually talk with pens about the things you can care about. Think about it, you go into a store, you're actually not buying the clothes itself, but also buy the things behind of it. AI can be a really good channel to help you to answer this question. Maybe people are curious about the country, uh, cultural context, um, or maybe people just want to ask, um, how about the carbon footprint you have uh, when producing these pants? So by answering this question, uh, by um, doing a fine-tuning <clears throat> fine -tuning AI behind of it, we are uh, able to share this with a client that has shared this with the world about more themed AI in the context. Another example um, is another fun way of pl play. So we know AI generates a lot of image, but how can we use that in the real case? So this is a project we did with Federal City Council um, in Washington, D.C. to help them to reimagine the city. Um, so IDEO decided to take 100 stakeholders through a futuring process to design the future of the city. Uh, so we host a workshop to help them to reimagine their day-to-day -day experience. But at the end, how we make it more tangible, how we let people to know that the future is there, it actually helps. Because people talk a lot about how we can re really reimagine that. So we use one thing called Viewmaster. Um, this is very vintage. Uh, everybody probably uh, play around with it. So we generate a bunch of images through mid-journey and create an image for the possible future uh, and various different spaces for the DC. When people see these photos, they get more inspired. We had more conversation going on and we bring that insight into our design process. Uh, if you want to check more, here's a QR code, but we're also going to share it at the end. So here's a question here about ideation. How does our relationship to the future change when we playfully explore emerging tech tours today? Okay, so we have some ideas, um, and we need to start to make them um, tangible and investigate uh, questions we might have about them. Um, so for this one, we want to illustrate this with a collaboration um, IDEO did uh, about a year ago now with, with uh, um, the furniture company Moy. Um, and it was a poetic home robot. Um, so uh, we took uh, inspiration from the uh, world of automation um, and combine that with the world of dance, actually. Um, we uh, built this, these uh, little macaronis as digital twins and actually um, consulted with a robot choreographer um, to try to, to really capture an emotional state and a personality um, into these uh, four dancers who then um, performed um, in Italy. Um, what uh, what was really interesting to me about this work is how we took um, the strength of one kind of process, um, the efficiency and the precision of automated manufacturing, um, and used it to create delight, um, to create uh, sensory experiences that are considered as, as opposed to um, kind of being the, the consequence um, of, of a process. Um, and we did this through prototyping. Shocking, it's in the prototyping section. Um, so there were many different kinds of mechanisms built, uh, you know, starting out of coffee cups uh, and eventually 3D printed irises and then eventually, um, you know, uh, full mock-ups of the, the whole product. Um, and by going through this iterative process, we were able to understand um, and express uh, these um, sort of very experiential and feelings-based goals. Um, through the, the language and the processes um, of, of automation. Um, and if you would like to experience the macaroni for yourself, and unfortunately only if you have an Apple device, you can go to this QR code um, and see them in augmented reality. Um, turn your phone off of silent if you would also like the accompanying um, audio. It's, it's, it's pretty good, I, I suggest doing so. Um, so this makes us uh, wonder, uh, what do we learn about the possibilities for poetry when we take our materials seriously? Uh, for our final uh, section of the design process, we're going to talk about refinement. 
Um, and here we're going to use uh, an illustration um, from an ed tech tool called Ethically, which is um, a tool to help uh, connect uh, students, teachers, and school systems um, through AI. Um, so the idea for teachers is that you get support, although um, not a fully automated solution for correction, um, bringing your attention to the parts of a student um, piece of work that, that need um, particular attention. Um, for students, it uh, helps them overcome many of the common issues uh, that students face when um, uh, completing writing assignments like the blank page um, problem by creating a series of interactive exercises that bring them from their assignment all the way through to their, their final. Um, and for schools, it is a way to um, standardize and proliferate standards and understand the performance of their students and teachers all in one spot. Um, and the reason it's in this section is because we actually built the intelligence engine behind this. Um, we spent time not just on um, understanding uh, from a, a, a base level what students and teachers and school systems were after, but then also building out proofs of concept um, with, uh, with the backing of the AI tools and then taking those back out into the field um, and refining them live um, in, in simulated uh, uh, classroom experiences. Um, and so for this, uh, we ask ourselves, how can we achieve greater depth in our design by interleaving building the core technology and defining the end user experience? I'll hand it over to Zoe to conclude. Yeah, so you already see all these different examples from digital to physical. I'm gonna share of some high level learnings we had through the process. So this is our very typical design process, but we embed the emerging technology into it and we get some new learnings. But the first one, the subject matter expertise is important to unlock the uh, potential of emerging technology. Uh, if you, we have this tech, but we are not doing this only for the tech, we need to solve the right problem, so find an expert to get into the domain. Especially using AI, we find that we need to uh, ask the right question uh, to let AI to answer. The second one is don't use emerging technology for the sake of trying out something cool. Rather, um, rather use it for a purpose driven by our human needs. Um, the third one is in a vast growing landscape of emerging technology tools, choosing the right one is the key. How we navigate ourselves, how we use the evaluation system to define for our team. So the first example we showed um, in the healthcare venture um, showed that we kind of evaluate the tools and then we deliver this toolkit to our team to use. So especially for the large team, how to define it, how to find a dedicated team to help you to navigate is very important. Uh, so for all of this, uh, I do actually have a tour. We call it Big Question. So we help you to use AI to answer the right question of the problem you're solving. So if you have a problem in your hand, you want to find the human needs behind of it, check the Big Question um, IDEO here in your Google, and you can find it and start to ask, answer, ask the right question to the future of emerging technology. Thank you. <laughs>